Now the size and the presence that comes with it has been the Tata Harrier's biggest draw in the mid-sized SUV segment. Few SUVs give you as much attention for the price as the Harrier. But rivals in the segment aren't holding back, which is why you now have this. It's the mid-cycle update to the Tata Harrier, where Tata Motor seems to have tried to broaden this SUV's appeal. That being said, Tata Motors seems to have doubled down on the presence bit with the new face. That to start with fits seamlessly enough into the unchanged bodywork. The full width DRLs with the welcome animations are a great mood enhancer as well. The heavy dose of gloss black and the sharp sculpting around the discreet lighting makes the Harrier far less bulky to look at now. The Harrier and Safari are now more distinctly separated with the Harrier carrying an athletic look with the large low air dam and more swept back effect to the grills. This grill has a 3D effect to it but looks much leaner with the hot foil stamped metallic inserts on it. Although we suspect these bits on the glossy panels will take some maintenance. If anything, some of the two-tone contrast from the grill could have been repeated in the wheels. But while the side profile remains unchanged, it's become a bit more streamlined with the new all-black contrasting look. Changes to the rear are small but again effective. We would have liked to have seen the wiper being hidden away as in the next one, but the full width lighting is on trend and stands out further with its sharp tiered design. Not much has changed aside from the sharper new bumpers that house the reverse lights, but again it all fits in naturally into the redesign. Now Tata Motors has put in quite a bit of work on the inside of the Tata Harrier and if you've seen our video of the Nexon, you know what's coming. So for example, the dashboard, at least the top half is now completely new. So it's a much more contemporary design and in terms of fit and finish too and the perception quality things have gone up significantly from the last version. For example, this top panel is now soft touch and quite a nice feeling one. And with this new design again, with the whole persona themes that Tata is going with, this fearless persona with this yellow color also gets this yellow pattern in the dash. Now it looks great, it's eye catching, it will be a bit polarizing. But what we would have liked is for it to have been textured a bit. I mean, you see this nice pattern here, but it's plain smooth plastic, which takes a bit of the effect away, we think. But aside from that, this whole layout again is similar to the theme set by the Nexon. So this panel will remain completely flush when the car is off. You won't know that there are any capacitive buttons. And then it lights up in a quite an inviting way, we must say. And these new air vents, they function pretty well too. And the way they're arranged in this seamless pattern right here is also quite appealing. Now, even here, this panel here has been reworked. It was hard plastic in the last Harrier. Now it's again soft touch. So overall, the sense of quality, like I just mentioned, has gone up significantly. The new glow up Tata steering wheel carries on with this discreet theme, seen here in a four spoke design against the two spoke in the Nexon. It's got that premium feel to it, but you have to work to keep it looking this neat. We found the horn pad to smudge quite easily and the gloss black panels also catch dust quickly. But overall quality levels have improved. Panel gaps are more consistent than before and most of the new additions to the cabin seem to fit well. But some of the older switchgear like the steering wheel stocks and the carried over buttons and gear lever in the center console still feel a grade lower than the rest of the cabin. Practicality has been given some thought to. The door cards haven't been changed with this update but they were quite generous with storage always. But the center console now gets a 45 watt Type-C outlet and two more USB ports in the small central bin. This space is small but is cooled and also houses a 12 volt outlet. But most eye-catching here is the new terrain mode selector. It functions with a slight lag but the crisp screen and textured feel add quite a nice sense of quality to the cabin. Now a big part of these new upgrades from Tata Motors has been the screens or the tech that's on offer and that's Again, exactly what you would expect from a new Tata car. You have this new 12.3 inch screen. It's like we've said earlier, a great example of how to do a touch screen. So you have this widget type arrangement in the home screen, which makes it very easy to access, you know, important functions like navigation, your music, your climate control, your devices and so on and so forth. And then you have this smartphone like menu, which again controls all of the car's functions quite easily. And again, you have a 10.25 inch instrument cluster the biggest advantage of which is that you can cast Google Maps right here on the home screen because the two screens here share the same ECU. And then of course you have a variety of information, a variety of views to go through. And But like earlier, we think that some of the fonts could have been a bit larger, a bit more legible. And this is just a nitpick, but the purple theme worked well with the purple color in the next one and maybe for this 
fearless trim of the Harrier, there could have been a yellow theme to the screen to sort of line up with the Nexon and generally with the cabin as well. The features list has grown noticeably with this update. Here's a look at everything you now get with the new Harrier. Now, a lot of you seem to prefer the Harrier as a chauffeur-driven car and in that respect, Stata has paid attention and again, like in the front, things have gone up a few notches. Now, what has remained same is that great sense of space and comfort that you get with the Harrier. So, as you can see with the seat set to my driving position, there's a huge amount of knee room, great leg room. And again, like in the front, the seats themselves are very comfortable. Now, they haven't changed from the last version. So, what you still get is a good amount of underthigh support. Quite good, in fact. A great backrest angle, good lumbar support, and of course, head support as well. There's also a slight reclining function that you can use, which is handy. But here's what's changed, and these are some really important updates. You get a sunshade, which is very well liked by all of us and a very useful feature for India. And these, these are again, these aircraft style sort of head comforters and they really do amp up the sense of comfort that's here in the back seat. Now coming to practicality, you do notice that you have a deep pocket here, for example, to put your phone in, it's handy. And again, two charge ports here too, a type A and a type C. And again, another very thoughtful touch is the air vents in the B pillar. So you can direct air to yourself quite easily. And it must be said that the storage spaces here are well thought out. Yes, a phone here might rattle around a bit, but you have big door pockets to hold bottles and such things. Now, of course, this is based on a all-wheel drive architecture. So you do have a hump, which means that the middle passenger will have to negotiate it. But given the width and the general space, it won't be that tough, especially if they're kids. And like I'll demonstrate, it's fairly comfortable and there's still enough space for two large adults and maybe a smaller child. And again, you have a three-point seat belt. And just to top off that sense of space, of course, you have a big, huge panoramic sunroof with the added benefit of now there being ambient lighting within the glass here. Tata Motors has doubled down on the Harrier's safety credentials with six airbags now standard and a driver knee airbag now added to the top trims. There's a useful 360 degree camera with a lane change view, TPMS, ESP and three point seat belts for all passengers. But the most effective addition is that of ADAS with its wider range of features. Automatic variants now get adaptive cruise control, but in this manual version, we found the emergency braking and blind spot function to be well calibrated for Indian conditions. These systems aren't as intrusive here as in some other cars, intervening naturally and without too much of the annoying beeps and buzzes. We would have liked for the lane departure alert to have been a touch more active, but this is still being worked on with more lane assist features to come via updates. Now start driving the new Harrier and at least at the beginning it's business as usual. You have a good view out straight up ahead you. The bonnet, the edges of it are clearly visible in spite of this being quite a wide and large car. So you can place it on the road in a tight lane quite easily. That being said, the earlier sort of drawback of there being quite a thick A pillar and a really large wing mirror, that still continues. So visibility here is slightly compromised. You might lose smaller cars and definitely bikes here, say at intersections and so on and so forth. And another drawback of this is that you still hear wind noise coming from this mirror and along the edges of the door sill. Now Tata has added this felt lining to it to reduce it and it has reduced but it's still noticeable especially if you have the aircon reduced and no music playing like we are right now. The revised Harrier continues to be powered by the same Stellantis sourced 2 litre diesel with its 170 PS and 350 Nm. This can pair with the 6 speed manual as seen here or with the 6 speed automatic. This motor isn't the most refined of its kind, but it's much calmer on the inside than before, especially at idle and when you rev out the engine. You still feel some vibrations through the floor and wheel, but it's not acceptable for this segment. Tata says a notable amount of work has gone into reducing NVH, and that seems to have worked. Now, there aren't any surprises in the way the engine works. The Harrier pulls well right past idle, and with this sizable low-end torque, you can handle all but the tightest of city conditions in second gear. 
As the road opens up, you find the wide power band to be quite useful. It's easy to overtake with a step up in performance past 2000 RPM, while general highway cruising is quite effortless too. The Harrier makes about 140 PS in its city mode and we found this adept enough for most needs. The sport mode with the full outputs isn't too jumpy either, adding a sense of urgency when you need it. The gearbox may not be the slickest shifting out there, but it's good enough for the job at hand. It doesn't take too much effort to slot into gears and the clutch is light and progressive enough to not be too much of a pain in the city. If anything, the gear lever itself could have been slightly shorter to be a touch easier to use with clearer markings for the edge pattern. But really what seems to have been the most noticeable update with this version of the Harrier is this new steering. Now it's an e-pass system which means that you also get steering modes. Now they're tied into the drive mode so you have the normal steering mode with the Econ City mode and when you switch it to sport mode the steering weighs up a bit more so you have a bit more sense of control and this really has made driving the Harrier just a whole lot better. Now with this change the Tata Harrier now seems a bit more manageable to drive. It sort of shrinks around you with the less effort that it takes in the city and out on the highway. It feels like a smaller car than it is. It feels quite compact on the road and quite easily manageable, which is great for something of this size. But this hasn't come at the cost of too much lightness. Tata has got the balance quite right. So it's got a good amount of directness. It's easy to use in traffic and it's also fairly hefty, which means that you never feel disconnected from what's happening around you. And yes, of course, as you go faster, as you turn into a corner, it's a bit more progressive. It's a bit more linear than what the earlier steering was which also ties in well with the general ride and handling character of the Harrier. Now, you know that it's based on the Omega Arc architecture, which is derived from a Land Rover architecture. You do notice those luxury car jeans in this car in terms of the way it will tackle a set of hilly roads, for example. It feels very well poised. Of course, it leans for something this tall and heavy. It leans, but it does so very predictably, so you know exactly what the car is doing. And in terms of stability at high speeds, it again pairs quite well with the way the engine works, so it's got great straight line stability, you feel very solidly planted on the road. So yeah, it's in that sense business as usual for the Harrier. Now another great attribute is the ride comfort. Yes, like most new Tata cars, it's got that slight firm edge to it. So over broken roads, even though it'll just pummel through them in a very authoritative manner, really do feel the sturdiness of the architecture when you go through a pothole ridden road. There is a firmness, you feel a bit of it coming into the cabin, but it's never jarring, it's rounded off well. So you have that great sense of authority over the road, so to speak, which really is quite endearing. And then as you start picking up speed and say you have smaller bumps to deal with on the highway, again, it smoothens everything out. It, with that whole very composed demeanor on the highway, it works very, very well. This fully comes through in some of the light off-roading we did with the Harrier. On a gravelly trail, we didn't really need to engage the rough terrain mode either. The ESC wasn't too trigger-happy and the Harrier balanced through these stretches briskly enough for you to not miss all-wheel drive in your everyday driving. This may be a mid-life update, but the Tata Harrier has become notably more appealing. It's become far more polished, not just in the way it looks, but also in the way it drives, addressing some of its previous flaws. The minor rough edges in the cabin inside also feel the most special place to spend time in. The long features list playing their part in this. If the next one is anything to go by, the Harrier will be priced reasonably too, bringing it into much stronger contention in this segment.